This is a uh, 2023 XTZ 1200 Yamaha Super Tenere. It's going to take the ECU out of it. Locate underneath this cover. Underneath all this spaghetti, find the ECU and then remove it and then we're going to get it reflashed. So there we go. Pazzo levers installed. Stock one's off. Got the ECU out. Marked it. Calgary XTZ. 1200. Well, you guys know what I think. Put this ECU in and give her a whirl. Comes back in about a week or so. So there's fairly big gains to be had with reflashing your ECU or putting a DynoJet power commander in when you fatten up the fuel trim because they're so neutered by the EPA emissions. You, when you buy one of these bikes, even though it's a big bore motorcycle, you do get shortchanged for sure on the the amount of power you think you have but you don't actually have. Like for instance, with the R1s and the big bore race bikes, I mean, up in the R high RPMs is 20 to 30 horse. So that's quite a bit. Nice bike. Lots of power, lots smoother. Just put the ECU in it. It's always amazing the smoothness that you gain when you get the ECU reflashed. I don't know what the specific numbers are on this, but I can tell you after riding it, it's it's quite a marked difference. You know, whenever you put a DynoJet power commander in or get the ECU reflashed, it's a it's a real big difference. What, what you get with the lean spots when you're going down the road, you get like a surge, you know, and a steady throttle, say three, 4,000 RPM, and the bike will kind of hesitate, you know, like, like as it's cruising where that should be linear and smooth and you know when you input that throttle control it should just do as it's told and, and be consistent. You find the throttle's a little snatchy like you'll go to Wicked and it'll just there'll be a momentary lapse well you know it catches a, its breath because it's just taking a big gulp of air with no fuel to accommodate for it. Hesitation on the uh, cruise which what that's what it was doing before it was very Hesitate, hesitating on the cruise. So when you take the stock ECU out and you send it away to get it reflashed, as they call it, it actually loads new maps into the computer. And maybe not totally loads new maps, but what they do is they change the data values in the maps, the X, Y, Z graphs, which correlate to every gear and different scenarios to what the bike's doing under load and under all the various conditions that you may find yourself in, uh, it accommodates for temperature, speed, load, uh, a number of other things. You know, the humidity in the air has an effect on the sensors. Anyways, it gets quite complicated. The fuel not only gives more power, but it cools the piston and it lubricates as well. And so the engine will be quieter and it'll actually run cooler in a lot of instances. Two wheel dyno works of Kirkland, Washington, USA, so shout out to them. They've done a good job, obviously. Runs good, no glitzy bits, and really smoothed out across the uh, RPM range. The ECU, when you get it reflashed, has a few other features that the DynoJet does not, which is, you know, you can turn the fan on earlier. Contrary to perhaps popular belief, the throttle on a lot of these bikes aren't connected anymore to the throttle body. There's actually a servo on the throttle body that takes input from the throttle. So the input from the throttle sends a signal down the throttle body and it, it opens accordingly. And a lot of times the secondaries aren't open uh, fully. So when you're doing full throttle, it's not actually full throttle. So that's one of the things you get from an ECU reflash. And all of this is really boils down to why do they do it? It's because of emissions controls. The are mandated by regulation to output only a certain amount of hydrocarbons out of the exhaust pipe. And so in an effort to do that, they've had to make some, several really big compromises. 270 degree crank on this thing, big 1200 cc motor. And when you drive one stock, it, it feels a bit like a dog. I, I can't quite explain it, but it's lacking for sure. You know, it's not, what you would expect a 1200 to be that's for sure a lot of the bikes these days suffer from this the they are uh, restricted by emissions caps and regulations and just because you're buying a big bike a big fast motorcycle doesn't mean it's the big fast motorcycle you think it is
or it ought to be. If you've got an older bike, one of the better things to do too, along with your ECU reflash, and a lot of people don't do this, is get your injectors cleaned. Put a new a fuel filter in and clean your injectors. Anyways, was it worth the money? Yeah, absolutely. This one, this uh, 2023, it was owned by a, uh, a girl and then uh, who was of short stature and then quickly traded it in uh, probably because her feet couldn't touch the ground. They've done all kinds of weird things like they put a lowering link on both sides to bring the bike down and they slid the uh, forks up through the triple trees a little bit to bring the height of the bike down to compensate for the short stature of the rider. I really don't like these um, lowering kits they put on these. I, I just detest them. It wrecks havoc on the nice geometry of the motorcycle. The Japanese spend so much time to make this thing fabulous. Evidence of it being dropped and then hence the uh, crash bars are installed shortly thereafter. I highly recommend just putting the crash bars on in the first place and then, you know, save you all this grief with the plastic and the cosmetics. They're a little spendy. They're, you know, four or five, six hundred bucks, but... So in recent years, one of the um, gimmicky or useful features, depending on how you look at it, advent of on-the-fly adjustment of the suspension on your motorcycle. Usually by via a thumb switch on the handlebars and then the ECU duty cycle motors on the preload and step motors on the valving on the rear suspension front suspension you can adjust the suspension as you please there's presets on the particular xdz 1200 on the front and rear there's four to choose from on this particular motorcycle and then there's another three modes to choose from with soft hard medium and then you can fine tune that as well uh, on your dashboard. So kind of interesting to use a similar setup on the um, FGR 1300. On top of each fork right there and there's one on the other side as well. Notice the wires coming out. This is for the rear shock and it goes out and in and needle valves the uh, flow of oil in the uh, rear shock under there and it regulates the valving based on the settings you've chosen kind of interesting look at how long that shaft is when you torque on this thing big 1200 cc twin motor 270 degree crank on it the shock tends to push down wreck havoc on the suspension early xs 1100 yamahas were notorious for that really short shaft on those if you'll notice the old xs 1100 yamaha four cylinder death traps but long swing arm on this pivot points right up here look how long that is so anyways that's why they've done it you can uh, get away with other manners of uh, actuation on the rear swing arm like the BMW for instance down here look at how long that swing arm is look at this crazy bike gonna gonna get it running good and then I'll do a video on this one too this original James Bond motorcycle as it's Favorably known, a little KLX 300, nice little dirt bike, enduro, got signal lights on it, a little single cylinder liquid cooled trailie bike, and then look at this VT 1100, really minty condition, this one, it's really nice, low kilometers, hardly even ridden, anyways got that running, carburetor issues as usual, anyways XCZ 1200.